It's looking good. 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 Hello, thanks for having me. A warm welcome, everybody, to the Celtic Fan of a Podcast. What a night it was on Tuesday night, Celtic in the Champions League against Leipzig. Outstanding, different class, world class. So let's say hello to John. How are you, John? Very good. Aye, but what a night, eh? What a night. Perfection, just total perfection. Obviously a bad start, but oh. somersaults last night, Xander. Somersaults, beautiful. Yeah. It was a performance, John, that I wasn't expecting, especially that second half. What a performance from every one of the boys and the substitutes that came on the park as well, John. Just outstanding. Um, all right, before we go any further, we've got a housekeeping. Hit that subscribe button, folks, please, just to get, help the channel a wee bit. Uh, and if you can hit the like button as well, that would be appreciated. Um, competition for the next week, commandment game, competition time, kick score, and... Uh, any goal scorer again so correct score any goal scorer in the comments one guess each to win your your choice of metal wall plaque we've had a winner over three weeks now um and if there's more than one correct entry we'll ha have to go to a prize draw as well all right john that's enough of that um we'll, we'll do a wee separate video for the competition this week um tomorrow probably so turn on your notification bell folks right john let's get into the game then um right away John, there was no fireworks, no, well, there was fireworks outside the stadium, but there was no flares or anything inside the stadium. That was good to see. Aye, that's, that's, look, at Hampton Park, I think the smoke gets trapped in that stadium. You know, it's very, the roof's very closed. So there's really nowhere for the smoke to go in Hampton, I, I think. So that's the reason why you've, uh, the game was delayed 15 minutes at Hampton, but Celtic Park's more opened. So there's plenty of places for the smoke to go. It's not going to uh, hold up the kickoff in Celtic Park. Yeah, yeah, and it didn't hold the kickoff up, did it? And uh, there were no fine for Celtic either. So uh, it was just good to see. Um, good, to, good to see, obviously, there's fireworks and flares going off outside the stadium, but uh, what a night, what a night it was. And that just added to the atmosphere of being bonfire night, John. Aye, it was fantastic. I mean, there was a bit of a smoky atmosphere in the stadium because it was bonfire night. Obviously, there's a lot of smoke in Glasgow and bonfire night. That smoke lingers all through the night. But aye, there was a wee bit of smoke lingering. You could see it when when it showed you the floodlight floodlights. You could see the you know the kind of smoky environment. But aye, nothing that could uh, hold up uh, Celtic. They were absolutely on fire. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, I'm still on a high. I yeah, really am still on a high after Tuesday night, John. It was just different class. It was world class, as I said earlier, John. That was a world class performance against really a team that should be sitting top of the German Bundesliga, John. If they didn't get beat at the weekend, they would be sitting top, you know. So I know that I know they're three points behind now, sitting in second. Um, but you know, you know, to, to put them to the sword like that, John, to play them off the park like that. Uh, it was impressive, yeah, of course it was impressive, but just, uh, I didn't expect it, John, I really didn't expect it, what about yourself? No, I, I was expecting a, a draw, really, that was the kind of, well, I was hoping for a draw, I said that in the previous podcast, I was hoping for a draw, but uh, oh, it's Celtic were lucky because that boy, I can't remember his name, he, he should have buried his chance that he had, but he's blazed it wide. He really should have stuck that in the net. So they did have a few chances that could have put us to bed. You've got to bear that in mind as well. But they didn't take their chances, and we did. Yes, that John. There's a few saves from Casper as well, wasn't there? So as you say, there's a few saves, a couple of chances, and they get their goal in the twenty-third minute. Um, trying to pronounce this guy's names. 
Baumgartner, is it? Baumgartner. Uh, I had a fair corner anyway, John, direct. I think it was uh, Big Carter Vickers sort of uh, knocked it on, didn't he? Straight to the head of this boy, out of the back of the net. Everybody's feeling the worst at this point, John. Uh, you, you can hear the sort of atmosphere in the crowds uh, lower a wee bit at this point, obviously because we've just conceded a goal. But the fans got right uh, behind the team again, John, within a minute of them scoring that goal. Aye, aye, they did. Aye. Uh, big rogue is up after the goal's been scored. The Celtic fans try to get the team moving again. But I think Arnie Engels was a bit suspect with his marking for that goal. Um, I've no blame on him, but aye, was, his, his marking was a wee bit suspect for it, to be honest with you. He's got to be doing better there. Yeah. Bomb Cartner, the guy that scored, John, that's his, how you pronounce it, I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, John, you know, the next five minutes after that, you were still struggling slightly, weren't we? You know, it wasn't the best first half hour of a game. Um, but you've got to bear in mind who we're playing against, John, these multi, multi million pound team uh, players, John. Uh, I think uh, Lenny said at half time, uh, they spent close to 400 million. I think we said that in the preview anyway, didn't we? Uh, so, multi, multi million pound squad there, John. Uh, and they were showing their talent early on in this one and we sort of struggled to contain them for about 20 minutes but uh, once we started putting our foot on the ball uh, it was just a different story John um, big trust eh John big trust at the back as well you know he's really settling into the team just now isn't he he certainly is but I think Celtic they didn't look that troubled up until they scored their goal to be honest with you I thought Celtic were pretty good up until they scored their goal. Then they had a wee spell for about maybe eight minutes. When uh, after they scored, they had a wee spell for eight minutes. Le- Leipzig, I mean. And then uh, after Celtic scored, it was Celtic dominated it, I think. So that was the difference. But uh, I, I, it was some game. But uh, Kasper Schmeichel had a few good saves to make. Aye. I'm just I'm trying to remember everything that happened in that game last night in the the short time that I've got here, but it's hard to try to remember everything. I've watched the highlights about four times a day. I watched your clip on YouTube. Get over to YouTube and watch Sanders clip as well, by the way. It's a good good wee compilation there. So get over there and watch it. Yeah, over to Facebook, John. Yeah. John it was funny because the first ten minutes they looked in control. And then they, they came into the game, they scored the goal, they were in control. And then as you say, John, once we scored that equalizer it was total domination and what an equaliser it was, John, from Nicholas Kuhn, you know. What can you say about Nicholas Kuhn? He came in last season, John, he, he was, it wasn't really settled into the team, you know, it was a wee bit lightweight as well, but John, what a player this season we've got on our hands, Nicholas. Different class, total class, what a wee player, what a winger, John, and what a goal to take that step inside and curl that, curl that round the goalkeeper like that, John. World class from Nicholas Kuhn, one each. You don't think that was a cross, no? No. No, John. He, he had totally intentional. Uh, right, and it, he placed it beautifully, John. Beautifully. As you like to say, a sixpence again, isn't it? Right into the postage stamp there, John. What a goal, what a finish, and what a, a player Nicholas Kuhn is turning into for us. I was six and a half a dozen if he actually meant it or no, but it doesn't matter. If he meant that, that is world class. Absolute world class. If he meant that, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he did. Maybe uh, maybe he was aiming for Dyson coming in at the back post. I don't know. But if Nicholas Kuhn meant that, that's he's going to find it hard to find a better goal in the Champions League than that. That was absolute perfection. Beautiful. One of the best strikes I've seen at Celtic Park, actually, to be honest with you. In the Champions League, I mean. But I doing that against an opposition at that level, Leipzig, top of the Bundesliga, and he's uh, picked that perfectly. If he meant it, I'm sure he did. <laughs> I don't know. It just looked like one of the ones. Maybe he was trying to chip it to the back post area. I could be totally wrong. He's probably meant it, Xander, because he is a quality player. Yeah, he's a top player. And I think he meant it. Uh, only the player knows himself, obviously. 
Um, but there was too much pace for it to be across, I think, John. I think it was he whipped up, you know, what a what a what a hit with his left foot and he whipped it, John, and uh, yeah, yeah, but away. Um anyway, okay, one each. Uh we word on Maida, John. He he was brilliant last night, of course he was. But his miss, John, in the 38th minute, you know, from hat trick to missing a chat, an open chance like that, John, uh, after scoring his hat trick. Um I think I don't think he realised had so much time on on the ball, John. Um, and they sort of uh, tried to curl it into the top, but it was way way over the bar. Um, a lovely be through ball from Nicholas Coon as well, John. So, you know, Nicholas is uh, very integral just now for Celtic, isn't he? He really is. Um, but Maida uh, just didn't he know didn't he know he had so much time? I, I suppose John had just placed his shot over the bar. I, I thought it was a cert to stick it in the net, that a Maida, but well, he didn't stick it in the net, so fair's fair. Um, he's been a great player for us, he still is a great player for us. He missed his chance, players missed chances, Champions League, big stage. don't know. He missed a chance, that's that's all I can say. Every player misses chances, but uh, he also got uh, nutmegged three times last night, Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's he's a top class player for us, and he dies. And uh, but yeah, he misses a chance. Fair enough. You, you just say you miss, you miss a chance. It's just it was just the amount of space that he had. I don't think he realised he had so much space. All right, John. Let's get to the one that puts us in the lead. And this, John, this goal is you know something out of a comic book. It really is. You know you don't see it in football. Five six Celtic players shutting down their defence like that, John. And no giving up and constantly harassing them like that. I've never seen anything like that in a long, long time. And I think the Leipzig defenders panicked, John. I think they panicked. And uh, and it obviously, it's Kuhn, Kuhn with his tapping, but it's a shutting down, isn't it, John? Your, your, all your players shutting down, Maeda, Kyogo, you know, just amazing to watch. And what a stunning goal, even though it was just a tap in, John. The shutting down, the closing down, the harassment of the Leipzig players. It's just absolutely stunning. Aye, aye, it was really good to watch. Dyson get nutmegged in that melee as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He get, he get, and then Callum McGregor get nutmegged. But it was pinging about in there. Leipzig try to, you know, maybe try to showboat a wee bit, try to show off with their passing at the back. Celtic players have an absolutely none of it. Closing them down, stealing it back after them. Leipzig would steal it back after them, try and pass it out. Celtic would nip in again. It was to and fro. Celtic won the battle. Real Hitachi emerges with it. We cross across the box. Dyza Maeda has a fresh air swing at it. And there he is. King Nicholas at the back post. Bang. 2 1. Fans are in raptures. Throw it under. And what a time to get that goal, John. Injury time in the first half. You know, that's. That was massive for us, you know, that you know, they must have went into that. Uh, the Leipzig players must have went into the dressing room on an all-time low, losing that goal just before half-time. Perfect for us, obviously, and it was a sort of a mistake for them as well. Wouldn't it give the ball away? All they had to do was punt the ball up the park. Celtic wouldn't have scored, but, you know, as you say, John, they're trying to showboat, they're trying to play out from the back. Don't do that when you've got a hungry Celtic team there. So, um, anyway, it's to our advantage. 2-1 at half-time, John. Um, I also wasn't expecting that, you know, to be honest with you, to be 2-1 two, one, two, one up at half-time after they scored an early. So, um, the powers of recovery outstanding from Celtic. Aye, I've, look, I, like I, I said to you earlier when I was talking to you before we came on here, I didn't feel like Celtic were in great trouble any time. Maybe when they scored their goal and they had about maybe eight, ten minutes worth of pressure after that, they had a couple of chances... But after Celtic scored their first goal, I just kind of relaxed and thought, we can take something here. And I knew that was going to give the team a huge lift, that Nicholas Coon wonder goal. And it did, it gave them a massive lift because Celtic dominated that game for that moment onwards, Sander. It was just clinical Celtic. They basically took half where they left off on uh, Saturday against Aberdeen. Yeah, and I think the Aberdeen game did. You know, boost the players, you know, even though we conceded that goal, John, uh, it didn't affect the players. It really didn't. You know, they, uh, you know, if anything, you know, 
the up their games lately. I know the, um, you know, Leipzig had their wee 10, 15 minute spell, as you say, John, but that's going to happen when you're playing against a world class team like them. Um, okay, let's get into the second half then, John. Um, just, you know, the shutting down, John, is, is what's um, catching my eye just now. The full, the full team, you know, after Alistair Johnson um, and Greg Taylor at the back, John, the central defenders, right through the full team, were shutting down. Every single player, every single player, John, that's got a wee bit of space, we're shutting them down, we're harrying them, we're harassing them. Um, a bit like Ange's ball, only quicker, I think. Aye, it seems that way, doesn't it? Celtic very fast at the closing down, stealing it and creating attacks. They're not just shutting down and doing nothing with it. They're actually creating attacks or getting it back to the defenders, back to Casper. Gives the team time to settle. They're rebuilding, regrouping again and starting attacks from defence. Just Celtic were absolutely clinical last night. No clinical in the finish. Just the way they had you know, that's the way they adapted to that game. They made Leipzig look like a Scottish Premier League team. I no disrespect to any of the Scottish Premier League teams, but that's what Celtic made them look like. Yeah, it, it, it was very strange. <laughs> I know, I know for have won in the Champions League against big teams before, right? But that was strange last night, you know, that was it was like a totally different Celtic. It really was. It was beautiful, beautiful to watch. As you said, John, attacking from defence, Alistair Johnson's overlapping, John, up and down that park. I've never seen a, a left back or a right back, John, you know, doing that to that effect, you know, to that degree for 90 minutes, overlapping the wingers. It's, it's, it's just stunning to watch. Brendan's got the team playing absolutely outstanding. Greg Taylor does it as well, doesn't he? Um, but that leads us to, to, to the goal, John, that put, puts us 3-1 uh, up. The overlapping from Johnson, the pass from Kuhn, overlap from Johnson. John Cross, Johnston Cross, sorry, into the box and Hattati there to finish it. Another goal from the back, John, starting from the back, overlapping defenders, crosses into the box and a nice wee finish from Rio into the, the top corner, John. So after that third goal goes in, I think the more or less the game's in the bag, isn't it? The game's over. We're 3-1 up. We're cruising. I don't think Leipzig knew what to do with Celtic, John, to be honest with me. And I think we about maybe 15 minutes to go, they sort of gave up. I looked that way and they gave up. I, 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 you're right about Alistair Johnson. He was up and down the line all night. Never stopped. 90 minutes worth of sprinting. What a player. Unbelievable energy. Him on the right and uh, they've got Dyson and Maida doing exactly the same thing on the left but further up the park. The, the energy they two add to the team. I think every player last night actually was given that kind of energy. That's the kind of performances you need to win games in the Champions League. And... I think Celtic realise that now and I think uh, where are we sitting in the Champions League now? Last time I checked, 13th. Climbing yeah. up that table, Xander, can we win the table? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, John, I mean, it's obviously that's going to change after Wednesday night's games, that's going to change, but we're in a fantastic position, you know, two home games to come against Bruges and Young Boys, John. Uh, obviously, we don't want to say too much on that just now, but, you know, these are easier games, I feel like. I know no game's easy in the Champions League, but these are games we definitely should be taking points from. Um, so we're in a fantastic position, John. And we both said in the preview that Celtic would take something from the game, didn't we? So we were confident before the game anyway. But for the boys to put in that performance on Tuesday night, John, that was you know that was just lovely. Love, lovely to watch. Words kind of describe what I saw from Celtic on Tuesday night, John. Um, and we'll wrap up the game. That that's full time. Uh, we just we just played a bit with them the last fifteen minutes, uh, and they didn't know what to do. They they gave up. We were quite happy just to keep a hold of the ball. Just beautiful to watch, John. But what I was going to say there was, where can we go? You, you said win the group there, right? Obviously in jest, but where can we go from here, John? But how high can we go here? Can we gain automatic qualification in the top eight? You know, right now as it stands, I'd be happy with you know the playoff sixteen round. 
if we get to the playoffs. I'll be happy with that. But can we, is it possible for us to qualify in the top eight, John? Absolutely it is. Uh, if they put in a fighting performance like that in every game, we definitely will. I think, you now if you look at the remaining four fixtures, uh, the next one, who is it we're playing next? I'm sure it's Bruges up next at Parkhead, John. You look at the final games then, Bruges at home, realistically you've got to be, if Celtic put in that kind of performance against them, you're looking at a Celtic win. So, if you look at that, I fancy a win against Bruges at home, I fancy a win against Young Boys at home, I fancy Celtic to go to Dynamo Zagreb and take a point. Possibly edge them if they play like they did last night. I mean, yep. Celtic Celtic could edge them over there. And the final game against Aston Villa, hopefully it won't matter by that time because we've already qualified. But I think we could take a point against Aston Villa as well. So, you know, if if Celtic get eight points at their next four games, which I think they can do, then that, that'll put us into qualification, I think, Xander, automatic. So that would leave us yeah. that would leave us on uh let's see, we have eight points, fifteen points. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I mean the world is our oyster just New John, it's um, it's all in our hands, isn't it? It really is. Club Rouge uh, earlier on, um, they won one nothing, John. They beat Aston Villa. So uh, Aston Villa are on a downward spiral just now. A few defeats in a row for them. And Club Rouge beating them earlier as well in the earlier kickoff. And Young Boys, John, they got beat earlier on as well. So um, mixed fortunes for the two teams that are coming up next for us. Um, but no, no, John, as you say, we can finish on a high points tally. We really can especially if we win these next two home games. So uh, that that's all we can hope for, John, isn't it? That's all we can hope for. Um, but we've put ourselves in a, an absolutely fantastic position. Um, and we can only wait and see uh, what happens, John. So, um, all right, John, let's get through some individual player scorings then. This will be good because even the substitutes that came on the park last night, John, were outstanding. Yang, brilliant. You know, I thought he played brilliant when the boy came on. Big Scalesy, again, brilliant when he came on. What a solid rock that boy is in, in defence. Um, Bernardo as well, John, when he came on. Even, even the substitutes, John, we can go through through them all. To a man, they were all outstanding, John. So individual player scorings, this will be quite good. What do you think, buddy? Casper Schmeichel put off three decent saves. I'll give him an eight and a half. I thought he was brilliant last night, Casper. Mm -hmm. Carter Vickers, eight for Carter Vickers. Trusty, give him a eight and a half. Well, he was very good as well. Yeah. Ar Arthur Johnson, nine and a half. Uh, brilliant. What a performance. Greg Taylor, give him a seven. He was half decent. Center yeah. of the park, Callum McGregor gets a nine. Yeah. Real Hitati gets a nine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure, sure, uh, sure. Uh, Callum, it's, it's one of his best performance I've, performances I've seen for Callum at Celtic Park in a long time. Fantastic, he was fantastic. Yep. Callum was uh, real Hitati. Give him a eight and a half, so he was brilliant. I know, yeah, class. Kyogo, he, he did nothing but run all night. I'll give him an eight, yeah, wasn't, he, wasn't he very productive with his finishing, but he did the closing down and running about all night, making a nuisance of himself. I think so. He gets an eight. Dyson Maeda get, yep. gets an eight, he was a nuisance to him as well. Nicholas Kuhn. For the first time ever, I'm giving a ten to a, a, a player uh, for the scoring. Score ratings, 10 for Nicholas Cooney. I thought he was unplayable last night, Xander. Yeah, they couldn't get near him. They couldn't get near him, John. It was just lovely to watch. Inside, outside, you know. Yeah, just they, did, they didn't know They didn't know how to deal with Nicholas. They really didn't. Um, and it was just lovely to watch. Uh, to see a team struggle against a player like that, a Celtic player. Um, I'll quickly run through mine. Big cash must make out the back, yeah. Decent eight. Uh, Trusty, nine. Vickers, eight. Arthur Johnson, nine. Uh, Taylor, seven and a half. He's just trying to find his feet again, Greg, isn't he? Uh, Callum, nine. Uh, Rio, 
nine. I thought it was brilliant. John I thought Rio was brilliant as well. Um, Engels, John. Uh, again, the boys just try to find his feet. So he gets a seven and a half for me. Uh, Maida, eight. Kyogo, eight. And Nicholas Kuhn, nine and a half. Yeah, John. So, man of the match time, I think it's only got one guy into it. I, I definitely I can only give it to Nicholas Kuhn. I mean, well, look, he scored two goals. That's why he's getting man of the match. But not only did he score two goals, he's setting up chances. He's going to buy players, but he's, he's flying into tackles. He's chasing back. His whole game last night, he hardly put a foot wrong. That's why I'm giving him a 10. And I've never given a player a 10 on this. Um, but that performance from him spread throughout the whole team, I think. Uh, I think the whole team, when they've seen the way Nicholas, if, you if you're see, if you playing football and there's a guy on the park playing like that, it's only going to drive you on Zander. And I think that's exactly what Nicholas Kuhn did. I think the players got confidence for him, the way he was playing. He was driving that Celtic team on and it spread throughout the whole team. And it was an absolutely stunning performance from him and a well, well-deserved man of the match. And by the way, I feel sorry for Big Liam Scales getting dropped in the Champions League and Aberdeen game. But for what I'm seeing from Trusty, he's starting to look like a top defender to me, Zander. Yes. He just needed games, John. And he's getting games now. And, and you're seeing the difference. He's, he's a top-class defender, John. Um, I feel sorry for Big Scales as well. He came on, John, Big Scales, and he wrapped the game up basically he just wrapped it up he just won everything in the air brilliant passing brilliant tackling just a brilliant different three brilliant centre backs we've got there John absolutely it's just brilliant I love it I love it um, just things are looking good things are looking really good just now John um, I'll be word on the substitutes then John I know I've already quickly mentioned it but it's just a wee, a wee bit more detail after you here, here John what a performance from Yang when he came on I thought Yang was okay when he came on. I his quick feet that he's got. Uh, I I played a blender when he came on. Yang, he had fifteen minutes to show uh, what he was made of in the Champions League. I think he acquitted himself really well. Liam Scales came on, the usual solid self, never put a foot wrong. Great passing, great winning the ball in the air. He's an absolute warrior, Liam Scales. Uh, I just feel really bad for him uh, that he's been dropped for the team uh, for the time being. Yeah. Uh, who, who else came on last night? Bernardo. Uh, Bernardo, I thought he acquitted himself pretty well. I know, I think he he played, played pretty well. Uh, he created one of the chances. I think it was the Dyson Maeda goal that was chopped off. I can't remember, but he created a chance to deep in the Celtic half. And he went right by a couple of their players like the one there as well, Bernardo. I think he was brilliant last night as well. I, look, every player that came on, every player that started, every single player... Contributed to, contributed to that fantastic win, Sander. It was amazing. Yeah, John, and the big Adam Weeder came on as well. And what I noticed about big Adam was he lost the ball and he chased all the way back, John, to the halfway line to make a tackle to put it out for a throw in. Just commitment, total commitment from big Adam Weeder as well, John. So, yeah, the subs and the start of the loving, John. Uh, to a man, thank you. Outstanding. You've made us all proud. Um, thank you very much to every one of them and Brendan as well John he's uh, uh, he's learned his lesson from the Dortmund game so have the players uh, it was just a different Celtic it really was um... alright John ok that wraps up the game then uh, atmosphere John that's how we were done the atmosphere inside the stadium obviously the atmosphere is always good in the Champions League nights but it seemed different last night John it was just a different atmosphere in the crowd it was buoyant it was loud it was different. It was, you know, it's as if every single one of these 60,000 supporters or 59, whatever, I don't know how many Leipzig fans were there, but every one of the 50-odd thousand supporters, John, were on their feet cheering on Celtic. Aye, it was a full house last night. I didn't see any empty seats. I know they keep a couple of rows empty at the front for safety reasons or whatever it is. In the Champions League, there's always a couple of rows of empty seats along the front. Yeah. But other than that, I'd say it was a pretty much a full house last night. I think it was Celtic Park capacity, sixty thousand four hundred odds or something like that. Just yeah. over six, 
just over 60,000. I think it was pretty much a 60,000 crowd. Uh, every one of them in boy mood. Ah, it was just a, a totally amazing night. Uh, well, you've, we've just beat one of the top teams in Europe. And the other top of the Bundesliga, well, they're second now, but they turn over a, a, a top team like that and make them look like your average Scottish Premier League team. And like I say, it's no disrespect to Scottish Premier League teams, but that speaks volumes of how Brendan's got that team playing. They absolutely fought for, every, absolutely everybody fought for. Yeah. Uh, I, I was well impressed and I'm, I'm really proud of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, all muds and upwards, isn't it, John? It really is, you know, in all competitions. Um, Nicholas Kuhn, John, shows how you celebrate against your former club. Ah, yeah, I was going to bring that up, actually, because he was talking about that after the game. Uh, it's always good to score. It's the best time to score is against your former club. Well, we didn't get that with Andy Halliday. Apologising to the Rangers fans for scoring. Yeah. Halliday also, he looked as though he was ready for crying, John, because he scored against him. He never meant to score. You know, that was pathetic. Without going about them too much in, in, in a celebration like this, John, but Nicholas shows them how to do it, John. He shows how you celebrate against your former club. I think the wee man jumped about 10 feet in the air with celebration, to be honest with you. So well done to Nicholas Kuhn for that. You know, you know, a proper football player, John, that's what he is. Um, and I also wanted to bring up this, you know, full-time analysis, John. This annoyed me a wee bit. Emma Dodds on TNT Sports, former Rangers TV host, John, Emma Dodds, Asking Neil Lennon and Scott Brown if they were disappointed with Leipzig. What did you make of that? Well, oh, she was disappointed with Leipzig. Of course she well, was. Maybe she thought everybody felt the same way she did, of course. I don't know what's going through her mind, but that's Billy Dodd's daughter, isn't it? Is it? Is it, John? I didn't know that. Well, there you go then. Uh, well, imagine asking two former Celtic captain and former Celtic manager if they're disappointed in the way Leipzig played. I mean, who gives these people these jobs, John, to be honest with you? What a night for Scottish football that was. That, that, that was a massive night for Scottish football. A massive three points for Celtic as well. Coefficient going through the roof because of Celtic, John. And uh, Emma Dodds asks, are you disappointed in Le Leipzig? I know. Pathetic, John. Pathetic. Um, all right, John. Okay, that wraps up for the night then. That was that was a good wee chat. So proud of the boys. I really am. We're up against Kamarnock next on Sunday. Uh, that's equally as big a game, John, to be honest with you. Three points, a must. Aberdeen still on our tails. That plastic pitch. Blah, 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 blah. We're going to go through a preview nearer the time, John. We'll do a preview on Saturday for that. But all we're looking for just now is Celtic to take that form into Rugby Park. Aye, that's it. Um, I'm sure Commander Kamar they'll do it. On obviously going to raise their game against Celtic, so we we'll need to be aware of that. We can't uh, just turn up there and expect to win. They've got to go out there and put on that exact same performance against Commander. Give them not an inch and go and beat them convincingly. That's all we can hope for. Uh, we'll do the, the the podcast on Saturday, and anyway. we'll we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that, John. Okay. It's all about Leipzig and Celtic, John, tonight. Um, my wee final sum up. I'm proud of these boys. Just keep up the hard work and you'll not be too far away. So, yeah, well done to Brendan. Well done to every single player that was involved as well um, the other night, John. Um, I'm just so happy just now. I'm still on a high. Um, just what's your, what's your wee final thoughts, John, before we call it a day? I'm just pretty much the same as yourself. I'm just delighted. Absolutely proud of the, the boys on the park. Every single one of them showed up. Brendan's got them playing away. I don't think we expected them to see Celtic playing, but you know, it's Brendan's second season in charge. And we know from Brendan's history, he gets stronger and stronger as he goes on. So uh, he's in his second year of three. And if he keeps Celtic playing like that, we're going to be heartbroken when he leaves. 
Yeah, that's it, John. Yeah, yeah. No, hopefully signs an extension to that. Um, we'll maybe go into a wee bit more detail, actually, about that on Saturday, John. Um, all right, thanks for that, John. Thanks for coming on today, buddy. It was a celebration. It really was. It was a night of celebration. Um, I know it's only three points at the end of the day, but it, it's the circumstances, John, and to who have beaten, the, the type of player, the money they've spent, and we put them um, to bed. Basically, um, all right, John. We'll catch you for the post match. Uh, sorry, the preview of the Kamala game on Saturday, John. Thanks for coming on, buddy. Hey, buddy, Sander. I'll speak to you Saturday. Speak to you Saturday, buddy.